Hi, I'm Jim Gaines. I'm the author of uh, 50s and Underground History. I grew up in the 50s and 60s, but you didn't have to grow up then to know that the 50s have a very well-earned reputation for uh, being the Eisenhower siesta, so-called, and for being uh, just conformist, um, competitive consumerists, uh, suburban placidity. Um, and that the 60s were all rebellion all the time. It was individuals who were struggling with identity problems of their own and issues of their own that were very deep in them and that kept them um, troubled but stubborn, moving forward in the belief and hope that they would find a solution. It took amazing bravery and self-confidence to do that, um, despite all. The ultimate example is Polly Murray. She was orphaned at three years old and raised by an aunt in the South. There in her segregated school, she was teased for her light skin. And in her teens and later, she was struggling with her gender identity. It's very obvious the psychological pressure she was under, and she could have been crushed by it, but instead she used it in a brilliant career as a civil rights attorney. Her, her law school thesis helped Thurgood Marshall win the case of Brown versus Board of Education. And years later, R Ruth Bader Ginsburg used her argument in the Supreme Court, led to making sex discrimination unconstitutional. This legal theory that she developed of Jane Crow, meaning the, being the subject of multiple discriminations, actually put her at the forefront of what's now called intersectional feminism decades before it was generally accepted. Maybe the loneliest rebel of the 1950s was a guy named Harry Hay. He was a closeted gay man and a communist. The only thing the United States agreed with Nazi Germany and Soviet Union about was that gays were perverts who were prosecutable just for their homosexuality. At that moment, in the 40s, Harry Hay had this idea that he should start a gay rights movement, and he did. But gay men were so afraid of it that he was left alone with this idea for a very long time, during which he lost his family and his friends. The black veterans of World War II, it seemed to me, never got the credit that they deserved. The few, few of them, it wasn't all of them, but a few of them gave very important armed self-defense to the nonviolent Martin Luther King civil rights movement. But without their support and without their anger at what they came home to after serving their country in World War II was the civil rights movement. I mean, the, the, the realization of the Voting Rights Act, the Civil Rights Act of mid sixties would not have happened without their support and their anticipation of black power. Uh, finally, the scientists of the 50s were turning out new pesticides, new fertilizers, synthetic fertilizers, new uh, substances for chemical warfare. Rachel Carson, a biologist, and Norbert Wiener, a preeminent mathematician at MIT, were coming very separately and from their very different disciplines to the conclusion that the mastery of nature held the possibility of killing all forms of life on earth. Their legacy is the environmental movement and their awful vindication has come with the existential threat of climate change. There's a theory that change happens when laws are changed which happens on the back of mass movements. But I discovered in the 50s another source of change, which is just the simple lives of conflicted individuals who insist, are somehow compelled to insist on being the people they were born to be in the country that it always promised to be. 